Okay, so now we're just going to take a look at a pre-built SQL table just as a test to show you how this works. So it's called the user and it's got a integer which is a primary key, auto increment, and it's got two strings or varchars of length, variable character lengths of 255. So that's the maximum they can go, the name or email. Shouldn't need more than that. So fine, that is our table in SQL. Now we're going to look at an ID, we're going to look at NetBeans. And in fact, any ID pretty much has the same type of tool to help you make Entity Beans very easily. So we're going to go to New, go to Other, we're going to hit Persistence, and then we're going to make Entity Classes from Database. Really simple. Now we have to choose a data source, so we're going to make a new data source, and we're going to make a new database connection. And now, of course, mine's MySQL, and the, it's all local host, port is 3306, database is test, root, root, and this is pretty much what you would use to connect to your MySQL database. And I'm going to remember the password, and you can add additional properties like create equals true to make the catalog or schema automatically, but this is good enough for me, so I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make a J in the I name test, and that will pretty much be our test database. So I'm just going to go right over here, and I'm going to add the user available tables to selected tables. I'm going to hit next, and I'm going to make a package, and it's going to be com.tutorials.ejb. And it's I'm going to make, you don't have, you really should use the generated name query annotations for persistent fields, very important. But what's not important is fully qualified database table names or attributes for regenerating tables. You can include them if you like. I'm going to show you what, fully qu what it looks like. So now, that's pretty much it. So if we open it up and we go to user.java, so it's fully qualified means it added on this idea of catalog equals test and it put the schema to nothing, I guess. And these named queries would have been included anyways. And those help you find all users or find by ID. We'll talk about those a little bit later on, maybe, in the next video. But, so right here, pretty much all of this is included, and that's to tell you that this is an ID, the generation type is identity, and it's not optional, the column name is ID. Now when we hit those add for regenerating the ta table, that's all it added, that nullable equals false. So there's not too much that's actually added, and it's not exactly necessary either. And same with the column name. This would have happened, all this stuff would have been included anyways, even if we didn't add the regenerating, uh, the ability to regenerate the table. The only thing that was added is that this length equals 255. And so that's not necessary to use the entity, only if you don't have it in SQL and you want to build the SQL from the Java object, which I don't necessarily suggest. So you can include it if you'd like, I don't think it's necessary. And it's pretty much a standard plain old Java object. And of course you have a two string and you might want to change this to, uh, you know, get name that might be a more useful two string, maybe not, it's up to you. And the equals really checks the ID, you might want to check um, only email and not the primary key ID. I think the primary key ID is a pretty way to, good way to go though. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is also to make session beans. And session beans is pretty much a facade to your entity bean and something that helps you use it. So let's just click persistence. You'll see what I mean when we're done. Session beans for entity class. And NetBeans will actually build a session bean for what we just made, the user object. So let's add it over here. We're going to make a new package so we don't get too confused. And we're going to call it sessions or facades maybe. And we're going to make it local because it's running on the same virtual machine as our database and our entity beans and everything. So we're going to hit finish. And there we go. It's pretty much all done for you. So now the abstract facade is probably the most important thing here. The abstract facade, as you can see, it helps you create entities, edit them, remove them, find them by their ID, their primary ID, find all of them, find the range of them, count them, and you can add more methods to this. For instance, you can use find by name and find by email. Of course, you're going to do that in the user facade itself because the abstract facade pretty much applies to 
all facades that you'll be bu building in the future, whereas find by name and find by email are really only applicable to the user facade. Now, of course, you have the interface here. You can make a more abstract interface, like an abs for the abstract facade. You can make an abstract uh, facade local if you really want. It's not a big deal. This will be generated code for you. The only difference is if you're going to be adding methods to the abstract facade, you're going to have to add them to each and every local interface. So I personally might make an additional uh, interface that I can just extend by using user facade local. And pretty much that would look like this, um, just abstract um, local. I guess that's all that's necessary. And then hit finish. So now we have an abstract local interface. And I can just copy pretty much all of this stuff, take it right out, right out of there, paste it right into here. And we're going to make it, of course, generic, add T here, and pretty much replace all these users with Ts. Save this, have this extends, extends abstract local, and of course as a user, whoops, as a user, save that. And of course we have to fix imports over here and add lists, and there you go. So now when you change a method, you add a method or remove a method from over here, all you have to do is change it in one spot over here. Now of course every time you add a facade, you're going to have to change it like that. You have to add this code. So, you know, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But now when you want to use your user entity, all you have to do is add this facade and you'll be able to find all users and edit them and you'll see an example possibly I'll make one in Wicked very soon to show you and you can look over there. The one nice thing about NetBeans and pretty much any ID will, that, will be that it'll add all this persistent context and all the naming things for you and hopefully they'll be named correct and work. Sometimes I have to change them depending on my situation. Okay, thank you for watching and please rate and comment and tell me if you want more videos on a specific subject.